So like I mentioned in the forum post for this event, it's really important that you have electrical absorption gear. So energy sheath, the electric version, twisted in is great. Electrical absorption items, the new ring out of Lost at Sea. If somebody could link that, that'd be awesome. Because this is really the best electrical absorption item in the game right there. Legendary ring of flickering steel. Not a bad farm out of the end chest from Lost at Sea. That's a free to play quest. But there are lots of other electrical absorption items as well, including uh, filigree sets and and stuff. Did craft it as well. I've got to uh, twist. Oh, I do have energy sheet twisted in already. Okay. Also, want to make sure that you guys have remove curse spots. It's really important, and make sure you don't just have five or ten of them on you. Make sure you have. I would say at least 20 of them on you. If you don't have remove curse spots, get them right there from the center of the market. Also, you must have feather fall. You're not going to be much help, and you're not really going to be able to um, participate if you don't have feather fall. So hopefully you have an item or at least an augment. It really is essential for you to have feather fall in order for you to participate in this event and for you to contribute in this raid otherwise you're basically going to be stuck on the starting platform Every if you're in exalted angel using the wings will um, give you feather fall for a couple of minutes when you are ready um, oh, also we're just going to be doing the raid on normal so if you need to pause your bravery bonus you may do so now you got time and then go ahead and step in when you're ready by talking to um shoot I already stepped in what's the quest giver's name Sarion Sarion yes talk to Sarion to enter when you're ready talking to Sarion here who's right in front of us will lock the raid so make sure you never talk to him and you know unless everybody's in in fact just let the you know if you ever join a pug raid or whatever just let the leader talk to Sarion and once uh, we talk to him he's gonna go over and uh, there's gonna be a little dialogue between him and Korkaza and for those of you who are who've done writing the storm out some of you were in our teaching raid a couple of weeks ago uh, it's the same boss Korkaza from writing the storm out the blue dragon except now she's a Dracolich is undead because I guess because we killed her in riding a storm out but now she's returning as Drac as a Dracolich and she's known as Korkaza the Mad and I think I guess the theme of this raid is like Korkaza is using the chronoscope to like undo some of our victories of the past and so you know if you have never done the chronoscope raid or maybe you don't know what the chronoscope is but it's like a time traveling thingy and uh device and that's the chronoscope right in front of us that big uh, structure there anyway so we're going to be sort of revisiting some of the battles from our past and uh, once we get this started uh, if you look around us and you open up your map you're going to see that there's a bunch of like islands floating out in space kind of and that there are like these air jets that I'll just gonna jump into one to show you see it's like this reverse gravity air jet here you can jump into and you're gonna use those to get out to the islands and the thing is is like the dragon Korkaza is gonna be moving around from island to island so we're gonna have to like follow her and we're gonna have to use these air jets that are conveniently marked with red beams so you can see them better And that's how we're going to get from island to island, following the dragon as she's moving around through at various points in the raid. Now, if you fall, you're going to appear in a penalty box, kind of like if you've done Von 2, the prisoner, and you fall and you, you, you end up in a little zone and you have to fight a spider to fight your way out. Well, that's kind of like it is here, except there's six different penalty boxes. And they're a little bit more elaborate than just fighting a spider and getting out and the penalty box that you appear in will be random 
and the penalty boxes include like different fights from our past like there's like the, the end fight from Chanticore and there's like the demon optional at the bottom of the pit fight in uh, Into the Deep and there's the Wiz King fight and, and then there's um the, uh, the pit where you gotta climb up and hit a lever and then there's uh, the tour there's a dragon and giant pair and then there's uh, the dreaming dark is the last one the end fight of the dreaming dark quest and so whatever one you appear in you know you're gonna appear in a random one and you're gonna have to fight your way out of it to get out but once the that particular penalty box is clear it stays clear for the rest of the raid. It's not like Von 2 where every time you fall down there's a new spider to fight. Like it stays clear. And because it stays clear, what we're going to be doing is actually we're going to start by clearing all those penalty boxes out. So that later in the raid if anybody falls, you can just get right out. You don't have to fight your way out. Now I will say that on higher difficulties I've heard that some groups are just not doing the penalty boxes at all. And it's like, you know, don't fall kind of thing but we've always cleared the penalty boxes um, we typically do this raid on hard sometimes we just do it on normal even when we're doing it in our guild raids um, I haven't done it on a higher difficulty than hard at this point so most of us are gonna start by just falling off the side and going to those penalty boxes now I feel like a decent self-sufficient tune can solo their way out of one of the penalty boxes on normal but not everybody's gonna be able to do that so most of us are gonna clear penalty boxes but there's gonna be a tank and a healer that go to where the dragon is first and the dragon the order the the, the islands the outer islands that the dragon appears on it's always the same order every time you run this raid unless she's randomly bouncing around so for example if you look at the map You'll see in the north, there's a small X-shaped island just uh, kind of north and a little bit east of us. That's the first island she appears at. So the tank and the healer are going to go out there, and the rest of us are going to jump down. And it's important that a tank stays with Korkaza for the entire raid, even though the party will at times be doing other things, like we're going to start off, the rest of us are going to start off by clearing penalty boxes. Because if Korkaza is left alone on those outer islands, then, well, she's working on a ritual. And in the upper right-hand corner, it'll say, like, Korkaza's ritual, and there'll be a percentage. And it counts up by 5% per tick. And it counts up maybe 5% every... Uh, maybe 20 seconds, I'm guessing, approximately. So it doesn't take long for it to reach 100%. And if it reaches 100%, you fail. Done. You're shot right out of the raid raids over so it's really important that somebody stays with the dragon and that those people stay up so it's having a clutch tank and a clutch healer is critical because there are going to be moments in this raid where the rest of the party is isolated from the tank and healer so they got to stay up if they go down the raids probably gonna fail unless they can gibbers up or something So tank and healer will go to Korkaza's first island. The rest of us will jump down over the edge, start clearing penalty boxes. Once your penalty box is clear, and you, there's, there'll be a portal for you to come back out, and you'll appear right here. And you're just going to keep jumping down over the edge and clearing penalty boxes or helping other people until we have confirmed that all six of them are clear. When they're clear, people will just type in the in, ch in party chat like "deeps done," uh, "stk done." Wiz King done whatever penalty box they were so that so that we know, everybody can see that it's done and when we confirm all six are done then we'll go to we'll meet the healer and the tank at the first dragon island and remember the first dragon island is the x-shaped island in north and we're going to use the reverse gravity jets to make our way over there if you have wings or abundant step like a favorite soul or a monk it, it's a hell of a lot easier but if you don't have that that's okay as long as you have feather fall and are even moderately accurate you can maneuver your way over there 
And if you fall, it won't be no big deal because we'll have cleared out all the penalty boxes. So you just come right back out. You will appear in a penalty box, but it'll be cleared. And you just take the exit portal, come back here, and go back out there. Now, I want to bring up a graphic before we get started. If you have the ability to pull that up, if you have a second monitor or you can tab out or whatever, that's great. You don't have to have that up. But I just wanted you to, to see that's a little map that, that Bolo Grub here made that shows the order of the islands. And like I said, it's the same every time. She always goes to the X-shaped island in the north first. From there, she'll go to that bigger island in the west. From there, she goes to the island that we affectionately call Mr. Potato Head in the east, like kind of southeast. And we call that Mr. Potato Head because it looks like a Mr. Potato Head with all his little pieces around it. From there, she'll go north of the one marked four, the big island in the, in the east. And then five is the big island in the south, and her final island six is back at the X-shaped island in the north. Same order every time. Also, Korkaza's position in the map, just in case you forget, is always indicated by a red dot. It is not a very good indicator because a tiny red dot on an island that's generally red is kind of hard to see. But if you look right now on the map, you'll see the center map is kind of purple. The center island is kind of purplish, and just kind of south west of us, there's a red dot. It's just kind of hovering out in the blackness that says Korkaza. That's the red dot that indicates where Korkaza is on the map, and so that'll move. And so if you're ever not sure what island you're supposed to go to, you can always look on the map, and wherever the red dot is, that's where you're supposed to be. But like I said, it's kind of hard to see that little red dot on a red island. <laughs> but if you look closely, you should be able to distinguish it. I also want you to notice that in the, in the south, the east, and the west, there are three islands that are larger than the others. And on the, inter, uh, the inner part, part of those islands, there's like a, it's kind of hard to see, but there's like a portal looking symbol. It's like on the part of the island that's facing the inner island. When we get to those islands, there'll be special objectives. And those are islands where like the party and the tank are going to get separated from each other. But I'll, there'll be time for me to explain what's going on when we get there. So the nutshell version of what we're going to do to, to begin with is the tank and healer go to the first island, which is going to be Bolo, Grub, and Yao. The rest of us are just going to jump off and start clearing out the penalty boxes until we've confirmed that all six penalty boxes are clear. Then we're going to go meet up with Bolo and Yao at the first island. Any questions so far? Okay. Let's get some buffs. And then we'll get this started. Oh, I didn't ask. I usually ask, what is everyone's experience with this raid for the folks that are signed up? Are you brand new to it? Have you done it a couple times before and are still learning, etc.? I also want to know with the people that are watching the live stream, if you've done this raid before, or if you're learning it first time, etc., etc. Okay, so all four of our signups are first timers. That is awesome. So we've spoken to Sarion. The raid is now locked. Korkaza is going to appear. They'll have a little dialogue. There's no point in jumping off yet because the penalty boxes aren't active yet. I think it's once they finish their dialogue is when the penalty boxes are active. Yeah, Yao and Bolo, you guys can go to the first island. You can take a look at the map. You can see Yao and Bolo have headed over to the X-shaped island. In preparation for Korkaza's arrival. She's now Korkaza the Mad. 
Blue Lady, first time seeing it. Okay. And the rest of us just fall over the edge. You can take Feather Fall off, because it'll just make you hit the bottom sooner and appear into a penalty box sooner. Otherwise, it just, you know, it takes a, a little while to Feather Fall down. My Feather Fall's a stance. I don't even know if I have that. Oh, here it is on my hotbar. So this is the tour penalty box. We have to kill the dragon and the giant at the same time in the tour penalty box. Giant's down. I think we do. Actually, I've yes, never confirmed that. So they will get back up. I've never actually seen that happen. Yes. Okay. So a portal appears. And then for those of you who are in um, tour with me, we're just going to jump right back off and help others. But they said Wiz King's done, Tor's done, Dreaming Dark's done. So we still have three more to do. We still have Deeps, SDK, I'm in Shandicor. and something else. I made it to the pit, so. Oh, in the pit. Was finished. When you appear in the penalty boxes, sometimes the portal to leave is just right behind you. Sometimes it's across the way, and you have to run to it. So, Wiz King's done, Tor done, Dreaming Dark's done, Deep's done. We still have STK and Pit. SDK done. Okay. And Vanna, you said you'll get the pit, right? Yeah. Okay. You don't have Pit's to. done. Okay, everything's done. Now we go to the Dragon Island. You just jump off into those anti gravity, reverse gravity jets. Definitely a Mario skills kind of place. Make sure you have your feather fall on. I see some people dropping like stones. <laughs> you cannot get out to this island without a feather fall, as far as I know. And you can just beat on the dragon at will. Notice that there are very large red orbs that are moving around. They actually move around in um, a pattern. And I don't remember what the pattern is at each island. In any event, when it moves through you, you're going to take chaos damage. And there's really not a whole heck of a lot you can do about that. MRR. There's also, I think, a new chaos absorption item in the new quest. The dragon's been beat down, and now we're going to go to the next island, which is the large island in the west. Going over here. Over there. Notice that the, the red dot indicating Korkaza is right in the middle of that island. We're not in a race to get over there, and you definitely, generally, you don't want to beat the tank there. Let the tank go there first. <laughs> Unless you feel okay about getting initial aggro. Um, we're not in a race. You know, just get over there. Uh, take your time to get over. If you fall, you just appear back at the center platform, and you can just make your way over from the center platform. There are more of these chaos balls floating around. They're at every island. There's really not a whole lot you can do. You just sort of have to be survivable enough. You know, if you see them coming at you, you can move out of the way. I guess you could memorize their patterns. I haven't done that yet. Oh, yeah. Stay out of the circles. Stay out of the circles. You notice that she just did a big whale the banshee thing. 
that's going to give you a debuff that looks like um, the stuff. doom, the doom symbol. And uh, you need to drink a curse pot, otherwise you're going to keep taking damage. So if you have the doom symbol in your buff bar, or maybe in your debuff bar, like the flaming skull thing, you need to drink a curse pot, otherwise you take damage pretty quickly. You see the circles on the floors? Stay out of them. You see she's putting three rings down now, and then the Whale the Banshee comes up. If you got that Doom, that Flaming Skull debuff, drink a Curse Pot. Trash is up. There's going to be trash that keeps respawning. Actually, I remember we recently discovered, like, that some of the stuff wouldn't respawn if we left one alive. I forgot about that until just now. Okay, Korkaza's going away. At this point, the tank and the healer are going to follow Korkaza to the next island. They're going to go over to Mr. Potato Head in the southeast. But the rest of us are going to stay right here, and there's going to be a portal that appears. Remember, I showed you on the map there was like a little portal symbol? This is the first island where that portal is going to come up. And the, inside the portal is going to be a fight from our past. In this case, it's going to be the end fight from Bond 3. So we're going to have to fight the... Oh, the Beholder, and the, the uh, Drowcaster, and the Troll, and then once we kill those three, we're going to fight the Marut, the Inevitable. This one's not bad. Everybody just go ahead and pile into the portal. Just click on the portal there. Don't run off the edge. You have to click on the portal. And there's going to be those Chaos Balls that are moving around. You can put on your spell absorption, and uh, when you have your spell absorption on, you won't get anti-magic by the beholder, or at least you won't get debuffed, I should say. Okay, those three guys are dead, and now we're going to go fight the inevitable. important to note that talking to her doesn't actually um, lock this part out, unlike doing the actual quest. Good point, thank you. So no reason not to zerg. Unless you're doing a really high difficulty or something. Exactly. This fight, not bad at all. Um, now we get a shrine. This is one of two shrines. Go ahead, shrine up. Wait for buffs. Now, right now, the dragon, or the, yeah, the dragon tank and the healer, they don't want to be DPSing Korkaza. Um, actually, at that island, it doesn't really make a difference, but when they're at the larger islands. Um, I guess you guys aren't never really are never really at the larger islands without us. At the end, the, the, the island five. Right. Sorry. The last. Go ahead and step through the portal when you're ready. We're gonna, this is going to take us back to the center starting island. Okay, and now we want to go to the Mr. Potato Head Island in the south east.
Notice that there's like eight or nine mini islands are on the outside. Those great places for like casters to hang out, range tunes to hang out. Even healers can be out here and you can be on one of the mini islands that's close enough to heal the tank and, and the party. And we're just gonna beat Corcaza down. We still have the the chaos balls moving around. Oh, I fell. Trying to fell. She's in the lost sea. I fell too. Just all you have to do is walk out of whatever penalty box that you appear in. The portal might be behind you. It might be in front of you. Oh, I see it. This is the STK penalty box. Yeah, there's a little bit of lag there. Even I fell. So something was weird. Well, I always get it because, you know, she slows you down and I always try to jump back out to those little islands and then I, I miss the jump. <laughs> Looks like she moved and she's now at the uh, eastern Trash. island, the large eastern island. Trash is a very serious problem in this raid. Oh, and you will want to have electrical absorption on and energy sheath on at all times, at least whenever you're fighting the dragon. You don't have to have that in the if you're in a portal or something. If you got that uh, that Doom debuff, Curse of Doom, you want to drink a Curse Pot? I'm showing you on the live stream. See, I'm ticking for 187, 209. This is serious damage. 184, you got to drink a Curse Pot. Hey, Ginger, are you making her vulnerable to cold? Uh, sure. Uh, I, I don't think you can. I think. Oh, I know, yes, I can. You can. She's taking oh. cold damage now. See these, uh, these, uh, chronoscope parasites that are out now? They look like red will o wisps. These things are a giant pain in the ass, but they can be. Trash? They can be. They can be hurled through hell. I think they. Can they be assassinated? They can if they don't have their shield up. Okay. Are there any other insta kills that work on them? I mean, the insta kills work. I the shields. If they don't have the shields, all the insta kills work. At least the necro ones do. In illusion. Staying on top of the trash is really okay. important when we're fighting the dragon on these larger islands. The trash can get overwhelming, and the, the parasites can be pretty devastating too. All right, so I'm taking over a tank healer. Um, sure, yeah, that way Yao can get a can get a, sh a shrine. Yeah. How about that? So Herika, Herika and Bolo will follow the dragon. Everybody else stays here. This next part, no, I'm going to kite Travelocity because I want to show it on the live stream. Oh. It would be important oh. right now to bring up aura so you can show them that I have like an aura that's going on that I have to wait for the aura to come off of me because that aura will attract the shadows. I well, have to wait for that aura to go away. Well, that's why, see, that's why I want to DPS the shadows so I can build up some hate. That way auras won't pull, pull them off me. You know what I'm saying? That was a big deal at first, but now that we've changed the way we do this, it's not as big of a deal now. So... Okay. This next part is like the um, part two fight for Tower of Despair. If you haven't done that, it's, a, it's basically like a big old hall, a big kind of circular-ish room. And the boss, Netherios, the Shadow Master, is atop of some stairs in his throne uh, on the other side of the room from us, big room. And there's going to be, he's going to have some shadows that come out. And the shadows look like that thing right in front of us. That shadowy thing right above the portal. And there's going to be six of them. And they spawn like every 30 seconds or so in pairs. So they don't all come out right away. So when we first started doing this raid, we just all jumped in there and we'd have one person 
assigned to, to kite the shadows. But the problem was it was kind of hard to get the shadows aggro, you know, they were all over the place. And if the shadows get up to the party, it can be pretty devastating. The shadows do cold damage just by virtue of you being, like, in their aura. And they do a lot of cold damage, and they can wipe a party pretty quickly if the shadows get up there. So what we've been doing um, ever since, you know, after the first few tries is we're going to send a shadow kiter in there first. So I'm going to go in there first, and I'm going to establish aggro of all of the shadows. And I, I not only want to get their aggro, but I want to do some damage to them too so that I can build up some hate, making them, making it so that they're not going to run away from me the first time they take five damage from somebody or somebody has an aura on. Like, if I've, if I've done a few thousand damage to them, they're not going to leave me, you know, just because somebody did a little bit of situational damage to them or something, or splash damage. So I'm going to go in there, I'm going to wait for all six of the shadows to spawn, to make sure I do a little damage, and just I'm going to kite them in a big circle. Once I have them all, then I will call in everybody, and everybody else will go straight forward to the top of the stairs across the room from where you enter, and you're just going to beat on Netherios. And once Netherios is dead, we win. You want to make sure that you do not DPS the shadows. You don't pull them off me. Um, like I said, if a shadow gets up there, it, it, it's going to be problematic. It could wipe a party. And this part can definitely wipe a party. If this part goes wrong, if your kiter goes down, if these shadows get loose, uh, you can go to hell. If you did, if you've done, if you were an old-time player and you, you remember Tower of Despair back in the day when that was an endgame raid, you know what I'm talking about. When those shadows get loose, you know, there's a good chance it's game over at that point. So it's clutch that you have somebody that can competently kite these shadows. If you want to watch what I'm doing, you can watch the live stream. Here, everybody, stay here. Do not follow me into this portal. Do not come in until I tell you to. And then once once everybody's in, I want to have one person and only one person that can surgically pull Netherios off of me. Somebody with like greater ruin or something. Who can do that? One of the High Lords. Precise shot works also. Not improved, just regular. Okay, then just will be the one. Every, everybody else will go to the top of the stairs, but nobody follows me. Do not come into this portal until I say please. can do red fire shield, although I don't know if that's helping me when I'm in cold elemental form. I've never, I haven't figured that out yet. I know they stated that it wouldn't, but that was prior to the, the update 38 changes being actually going live, Another so I don't know. To use when going in there is, uh, fire shield. So there's Netherios, and uh, if he trips me, if he knocks me over with a Cyclonic Blast, I'm going to be pissed off. He did that to me once and I died. Even though I'm immune to knockdown. <laughs> Which in DDO means you're immune to everything that can knock you down, except for all the things that can still knock you down. <laughs> so I'm going to do, um... Oh! Crap. I accidentally tabbed out there almost. I don't know how that happened, but I'm going to do um, a Creeping Doom, and that's going to splash a dot Pretty on the off. rest of them. Okay. So I'm doing that to build up some hate. Okay. Oh, because the shadows do cold damage. Okay, that's right. See, they're all taking a little all are acid dots. If y'all what's happening on the tank island, you're not missing much. It's a pretty boring job. That the tank is more is more or less a dragon babysitter. Okay, I have all six of the shadows now. I have all six of the shadows, but do not come in yet. I'm going to call you in once I drag the shadows past where you enter. So, like, I wouldn't want to call you in when the shadows were right there where you guys were going to step into, because then that could cause a bunch of deaths. So, I'm passing by now. Get ready to go in. 
go ahead and step in. Everybody run straight ahead to the stairs. Watch for the shadows. You can stop if you need to. Because I'm bringing the shadows by. And uh, you can just wait for them to pass. Do not attack them. Don't pull them off of me. And Vengeance is going to pull Netherios off of me with like greater ruin. And he's going to pull Netherios up to the top of the steps. Looks like he's got him. Perfect. And you guys just beat on Ethereos. If you're new, feel free to, you know, if you want to watch one of them, if you want to look out, you know, it's okay. Everybody else is beating on Ethereos. If you want to just kind of see that I'm just kiting them in a big circle. You can actually use the pillars as a barrier to kind of slow them down a little bit. Once Netherios gets down to like 50% or so, there's going to be circles that start appearing out here, purple circles. If I run through those, I'll take force damage. So I have to avoid those. It's easy to avoid them. You want to make sure that your kiter is fast or at least has like wings or abundant stuff or something. So I've got my Dragonborn um, memory of flight, but if I really need to, I can always switch to Winter Wolf form and Snow Slide. But then I just, if I do this though, I'm just, I'm running too fast, right? So I actually don't want to do that typically. Gotta avoid these purple circles. Good job, guys. This is the second and last shrine of the raid. So. <laughs> nice, Vanna. Yeah, I need somebody to, to sponsor me, Vanna. Because Angry Orchard is not sponsoring me. I need, like, <laughs> some somebody's shirt that I can wear. <laughs> So, since only two shrines are inside these portals, that means it can be advantageous to have, like, the tank healer swap out with another healer, you know, at some point, like, kind of like we just did, so that Yao, Yao was the original tank healer, but then he swapped out with Herika so that Yao could get le at least have one shrine. But that means that Herika also only gets one shrine. Herika will get the first shrine, sh Yao got the second shrine. Let's go ahead and get some buffs. And then we're going to go to through the portal. Fortunately, I'm in Sentinel, and Renewal is a good enough heal for tank setting, at least. Hell yeah. Renewal so awesome. Close wounds from Favorite Soul works also. We're going to the South Island now. The big island in the south. So you just run around the chronoscope until you get to the south side, and then you're going to use the anti gravity or reverse gravity jets to navigate out there. Now, with snow slide, I can just, I could have snow slid all the way out to that island from the main island. But for purposes of the live stream, so you can see what to do if you don't have wings or something, you just. Use the air jets and navigate your way out here. Trash on these islands. The trash only comes on these bigger islands. When, when the dragon's on the tiny islands, there's no trash. You still got chaos orbs, but um, on these bigger islands with the trash, the trash can, can get overwhelming. Trash is up. Trash up. And it's really important that, you know, whatever your leader says to do, maybe they want everybody on trash when it spawns. Maybe there's just a few people assigned to trash duty. Whatever the case is, it's really important that trash doesn't linger. I'm making the dragon vulnerable to cold. And for the Don't folks watching, this island has the boom. Oh yeah, I can't remember. If, does the boom start on this island? I think it does, doesn't it? Yep. I think okay. it does. 
So y you per periodically, random people will get this red light. If you get that, get away from everybody else. There'll be a number counting down above your head. Just get away from everybody else. Because you're going to blow up when that counts to zero. It won't hurt you, but you're going to seriously damage other people around you. Cash this up. It's clutch that pe you know that you know to just get away from everybody else when you see that. What you can do is run at the trash and blow up on the trash. That's actually helpful. And if you run at one of the uh, parasites and the parasite has its shield up, it'll like blow the shield off of it. Okay, some people got the the boom, the red light. Yeah. Get away from everybody else. Oh no, Musk! Dang it! <laughs> trying to get away. From That's me. what happens when you, when you're near right somebody now. else. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for demonstrating. Musk was just demonstrating for the for everybody learning. Thanks, Musk. We're all we were all <laughs> running the same way. I came out of it fine. The person with the boom actually doesn't get damaged. It's anybody around them gets screwed. There is a death timer Johnny, on higher you difficulties. You need to move away. There's a death timer on higher difficulties. China, and China make you don't want to be standing next to me. That's the worst thing you can do is be near the tank when you have the boom. Stay out of the, the circles. Okay, parasites are up. See, I'm gonna blow up on this parasite. Watch this shield come down. Boom, my shield came down. Hey, Ginger, I've got 17 stacks. Okay, I'll take over. So Thank it's you. also really Ooh. helpful to have multiple tanks in this raid. Because the dragon is going to put stacks of vulnerability on you. And... It can right, be clear. really helpful if there's another tank, and they can just swap out. And the first tank will let those vulnerability. The first tank will let those vulnerability stacks time out. Thank you. Thank you. The chronoscope parasite has a shield on it, and yep. then they they just blink out. They they only last so long, but you can kill them. But if you don't kill them within, you know, a couple minutes or whatever, they'll go away. And the dragon flies away. The tank will follow her. As will the tank healer. In this case, uh, I guess Yao can follow him. It don't murder. Oh, I already jumped. Okay, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. And now we're going to have the final fight. But the tank needs to continue to babysit the dragon. Notice in the upper right hand corner it says Korkaza's ritual paused. If you guys could not go to Korkaza's island right away, because I want to show that counting up and show about how long it takes to, t to count up. Okay. So just Bolo and Herika just hang out at the starting island for a, for a minute. Mm -hmm. Let's see. You can see Korkaza is at the island way across from us. As you can see the big red orb around her. And when she gets settled in, the ritual is going to start counting up, starting at 5%. And let's go ahead and let it count up to 15 before you go out there. It's at 5% now. When that reaches 100%, we fail the raid. So th this is why the, the tank has to be out there. And I'm just letting you see how quickly it counts up. 10% now. Yeah, especially on higher difficulties. If you think you could just let her do her thing and power through by DPSing the subparts, nope. 15. Go ahead and go out to that island, guys. Um, the t uh, Bolo and Herica, that is. Okay, so we're going to have the end fight of the Lord of Blades raid. If you haven't done that, that's okay. That's the Lord of Blades there that you see standing on top of the portal. He's not that big. He's actually about half that size. But we're going to be on like a platform. It's not a very big platform. 
smaller than the one we're on right now, about half this size maybe. Well, maybe three quarters this size. And there's going to be the Lord of Blades in the middle, a bunch of trash mobs, and two iron defenders. The dogs. And a tank is going to grab the Lord of Blades. In this case, I'm going to grab them. And everybody else is going to kill the trash and the dogs. Now, some groups will kite the dogs. And that's fine. You can have somebody assigned to kite the dogs. That's actually that's absolutely fine. I like for our, for our groups to kill them because it gets them out of the way. It doesn't tie up a person kiting them. Once they're dead, they're out of the way. They will respawn. We'll kill them again. It doesn't take very long. The, the thing I don't like about kiting them is if something happens to the kiter, the kiter goes down, the dogs are running loose, and that can cause problems. It does take a little longer, perhaps, to kill the dogs, but not much. And once, you know, like I said, it just sort of gets them out of your hair. You don't have to worry about something going wrong with the dogs at that point. Just like in the Lord of Blade raids, the dog will do this, like, vomit for lack of a better term they're gonna like spit out pools of goop that are um very hard to see you know if it's not something you're used to seeing it, it people struggle seeing it the first time because it just the colors just sort of blend in but it's kind of like um a light like cyan colored with a little bit of greenish in there and it's probably like 15 feet in diameter maybe 10 feet in diameter and you're gonna take I think force damage if you're in them or electric damage one of the two stay out of the vomit and is is the bottom line look for the vomit stay out of the vomit if you're fighting the dogs and you're in vomit move the dogs out of the vomit so tank grabs the Lord of Blades everybody else kills trash then kills the dogs or trash and the dogs and then once the trash and the dogs are dead then you start beating on the Lord of Blades. When the Lord of Blades beats down to 70, he'll call out more dogs. You'll break off, kill the dogs, and then back to the Lord of Blades. He'll call out his dogs again at 30 and 10. Each time you're going to kill the dogs. Actually, the last iteration, we can just focus on the Lord of Blades. Because once the Lord of Blades dies, we win. It's over at that point. The Lord of Blades has some special moves. Um, when, he hits, when he crits you with his um, trident, he can put a stack of what's called touch the moorlands on you which like lowers your hit points or con or something and it stacks up and uh, the tank can shield block to prevent that the tank wants to spend a lot of his time sh or her time shield blocking when tanking the Lord of Blades he also has other special moves one is the rain of blades he's gonna shoot up a bunch of like Carolina white blades in the air and it's yeah. gonna rain like okay. it's gonna rain down swords we just jump off we'll be fine there's nothing in the lord of blade raid you go to the center is like a safe spot but there's no safe spot here you just kind of have to power through it it's just gonna do a little bit of damage no big deal he also has his whirlwind attack if you hear us call out whirlwind get away from the lord of blades get far away from him because he swings his trident around and he just starts knocking you around all over the place and he does quite a bit of damage if I can interject for one second, we just had the tank fall and come back, but it's really good to have a durable healer for that purpose. Since I was able to stay in and take a couple blows while he was getting back here, the ritual didn't increase. It's a good point. It's definitely a good idea to have a durable healer if that's possible. But if not, in that situation, if the, if the healer doesn't have a prayer standing up against the dragon, the healer can just fall off. Because you saw, like... The, the ritual doesn't won't start counting back up right away and it counts up like one tick every 18 seconds so it's not like you're gonna fail if you're not there for a minute you could just fall off go back to the main island and go back go out you know make your way back out to Corcaza maybe the the thing will tick up to you know 10 more percent it's not the end of the world Any questions before we go into the Lord of Blade fight? Any questions about anything up to this point? This is the final fight of the raid. Okay. Everybody in the portal. There's no waiting this time. Everybody can go right on in. If you've never done the Lord of Blades, the end fight platform is just like this. However, instead of there being like a barrier, and we, we can't fall off it here. There's a barrier, we can't go off it at all. No, just one quick thing. FOM helps 
if you're trying to get out of the puke. Oh, yeah, good point. I would have forgotten to say that. Um, once we step forward, this will get started. Remember, just kill the trash, kill the dogs. I'll I'll get the Lord of Blades. I got gotcha. you. Thank you. But in the Lord of Blades raids, which we'll be doing as a teaching raid sometime soon, uh, over the next couple of months, it's, it's a bunch of like electrical water or something. Here's, is that touching the morning lands? No, that's the winding chain. Once that okay, everybody can just pile on the Lord of Blades now, attack him from behind. He's doing his Superman thing. So I'll need to reestablish aggro. Let the tank reestablish aggro when he does this. Go ahead and uh, beat on the Lord of Blades. What does the puke do? Is it force or electric damage? Here's the dogs. Go ahead and beat on the dogs. I'm going to pull the Lord of Blades away. See how it just kind of blends in? Oh, it just disappeared. But there's some more puke over there where the party is and the other dog. Go ahead and beat the dogs now. I'm in standing in the puke now, so on normal it looks like I'm 22 damage, 33, 106, 36. But I have energy really sheet now. The big opportunity to actually like, have his trident as uh, named Blue here. Yeah. They could have called it a core stat, but just as long as it was like skinned to look like that, that trident. Yep. That's so cool. I would like all the new people to get in front of the Lord of Blades. I want you to see what it feels like when he hits you. Now is the time to experience this kind of thing. Take a hit from the lob. He's a fun guy. Right, I'll stop killing him. He's one of the more interesting watch me get beat up by him. raid bosses for a tank to to tank because he has a lot of special moves and the tank has to know what to do, you know, when to block and etc. As opposed to some raid bosses, you're just standing there the whole time, not really doing a whole lot. Okay, at this point, you know, we just go after the Lord of Blades. He's going to go aggressive here in a second. He's at like 5%. We, he, he dies, we win. So just beat on the Lord of Blades. Maybe your raid leader will tell you to clear the trash or something, but you can see how quickly we beat him down. But I don't know if it's due to poor programming or what, but you can see he gets right back up. And it seems like it's not over, but it really is over. We really don't have to do anything at this point, and in a few seconds the Lord of Blades will go away and we'll be teleported. There we go. And we win. That's killing time, guys. Congrats on your first. If you have any questions, let me know. There's going to be a final dialogue, and then we can get to loot. That did not take as long as I thought it would. I thought we would be pushed a lot closer to 1030. I might try to see if everybody who signed up for the 1030 can do it early, but we'll, we'll take a break, though. For those for, um, for the high lords that are going to be remaining for the second run, you know, you guys will have a break between. So. And one quick thing: if you do find yourself tanking or healing, 
once you hear that the Lord of Blades is dead, you can nope out of the um, babysitting. That's a good point. Once the lob goes down, the tank and the healer can just jump off of their island and hang out here. That went a lot smoother than I thought it would. You're welcome. <laughs> Thanks, Musk. I appreciate all of you High Lords for being here. Helping to make it a smooth run. There's been uh, quite a, there's a lot of pain getting to this point, guys. For those for those of you who are new to this raid, we definitely had some, uh, you know, as a guild, we we have failed this raid. You know, there's been some painful moments, and everybody here has been doing this raid pretty much from the start. And I, I can't emphasize enough how much I count on their experience in knowing what to do so that I can focus on teaching you guys how the raid works. And I, and I know that all the rest of them will have things covered. Alright, any one of the new folks, go ahead and help yourself to the chest. Don't forget to manually loot your raid runes and your threads of fate. Loot all will not loot them. Uh, I got a schism shard. Rats. Loot. Uh, that's what I was looking for. Schisms are used to upgrade uh, White Plume Mountain items. I don't know. Do they, do they have any effect? What uh, else do they do? No, it's an assortment of stuff. It, well, White Plume Mountains and then that weird bendy sword from the Mines of Tethymer end. And one of uh, the inquest. things from Temple Elemental Evil. Yeah, yeah it's really and, weird. Yeah, Temple Elemental Evil, right. You but can... That, um, there's a crafting device behind the entrance to White Plume Mountain and Hollow Heroes, like on the other side of it. There's a crafting device you can click on. That's where you can use schisms to upgrade stuff. I highly suspect they're going to keep adding stuff to it, so even if you don't see something on there that you know you need schisms for, I would still keep them. There's, a, there's some really random things on there right now. All right, guys, that is all.